Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week, the one show where you don't have to worry about being judgmental because that's what we do for you. Uh, we'll judge everybody who's been up in front of us this week because there have been an awful lot of planks and I don't know where we're going to begin but what I can tell you is that we've got a fantastic panel and for the next hour we will be picking over uh, the remains of what happened this week. Uh, we've got Mark Saggers back, uh, Talk TV's very own sporting genius. We've got Dr Renee Hunderkamp in the house so if you're not feeling very well you know who to see. Um, we've got Amanda Devlin back from The Sun and Leon Emirani of course course, a former government advisor. There's a lot of former government advisors around at the moment because nobody wants to take the blame. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, what I have got for you here is the prize that they're all fighting for. It is, of course, the Plank of the Week. Now, I think we can only start in one place with Dr Renee's first <laughs> nomination, and I think you might know who this will be. Go for it. So... I have been on this show before and been quite exercised by this person, Mike, as you know, and that is our lovely Matt Hancock. Yes. And really, Matt started winding there he is. me up. There he is. <laughs> he started winding me up in about the first week of the pandem <laughs> pandemic, about yeah. three years ago, when I saw, hands on, in GP land, that the elderly were being thrown under the bus mm. by our esteemed health secretary, yeah. as they were being chucked out of hospital, whether or not they were COVID positive, and back into care homes. And some of them might have had tests, but quite often the tests weren't back before they came home. The staff weren't getting tested. So we knew that these were our vulnerable people. Yes. And we were just locking them up with the virus and letting them get on with it. And I was then further incensed when it became apparent to us as doctors that we weren't to send them into hospital, because even if they just need a little bit of help or support, they were just to stay there. Yeah. And really, because they were obsessed with keeping people out of hospitals. They were they? obsessed, and it didn't matter what was going on. So for me, today's news, um, with these WhatsApp messages that yeah. have come out, you know, if they are true, and we don't know the full context yeah. behind them... Well, let's, let's just explain what's happened. What's ha happened is Isabel Oakeshott, from this very parish, Talk TV's as international editor, has got herself a whole load, over 100,000 100, uh, of text messages, WhatsApp messages, uh, which she has given very nicely and gratefully, to the uh, Daily Telegraph. Um, <laughs> now, how she obtained these is no, it's no secret. Uh, she wrote a book with Matt Hancock, yeah. got a lot of flack for doing that, um, but obviously convinced him as part of that that she should uh, be in receipt of these uh, messages. Now, he's also given those messages to the COVID inquiry, mm -hmm. so they're not necessarily... Um, already not going to be in the public domain. But it's created a huge stink, hasn't it? A huge storm, because, as I said, if they are correct in the way that we're seeing them and they haven't been, you know, changed or doctored or yeah. whatever the context is, then it validates everything that those of us on the ground were watching. Yeah. I mean, I wrote a piece about this in June 2020 that we were actually condemning these people... Yeah to death in the care home. Yes, and an awful lot of them did die. They really did. 44,000 yeah. in total. Mm. 17,000 in that period that's been discussed in the text messages. So mm. I think the families yeah. of these people who were left to die alone, let's not forget that as well. They couldn't even die holding the yeah. hands of the people no, they No, because loved. people couldn't see them because yeah. of an awful lot of these terrible yeah. things. It and was barbaric. It and really was. This man, for me, was at the helm mm. and if this is what he was ultimately responsible for, he should be ashamed. Yes. Well, and the allegations in the Telegraph are that he wasn't taking the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, uh, Chris Whitty, but he, of course, has, has sent his rebuttal to these allegations uh, in which he says things like, it's an outrageous distorted account of the pandemic he says it's being pushed with an anti-lockdown agenda. I don't even know what an anti-lockdown agenda is. I think most people uh, <laughs> were quite happy um, to <laughs> not agenda, be locked right? down. And now an awful <laughs> lot of evidence is coming out that we should never have been locked down. Um, you know, and that inquiry will continue. Um, but, you know, he's claiming, basically, um, that <clears throat> this has all been taken out of context. But it remains to be seen. I don't see how he can. Because one of the things that I found particularly disturbing uh, is that there appears to be evidence that um, some ministers were sort of jumping the queue mm. to get their hands on tests. Because they're saying, on the one hand, oh, well, there weren't enough tests to test everybody, so that's very unfortunate. Well, if there weren't enough tests for ordinary people, why were MPs and, and ministers allowed uh, to actually jump the queue and get testing kits? Well, we didn't have tests. No. So as doctors dealing with patients, we didn't have enough tests. Mm. So, yes, I absolutely agree. And I think what's really interesting about these messages is there's so much coming out that we didn't know. So, for example, there's a message from Boris where yeah. he questions what the fatality rate is of COVID. COVID. Should we be locking down this hard yeah. when the biggest killer of old people is falling downstairs mm. but we don't take their stairs away? Right. So for me, Matt Hancock was in charge. He's already proven himself with jungle, 
you know, and all of that. Yeah, so the SAS one, show. The SAS He's show. He's now formed himself into a TV documentary <laughs> exactly. company. I mean, why? I said this today. It's like me deciding to open a film studio. Right, I'm going to start making some films now. Yeah. Oh, great. But, you know, one, I don't know how to do it. And two, I haven't got any money to yeah. do it with. Yeah, but it's his arrogance and his narcissism is coming to the fore. And I think he's really worried that this is going to kibosh those future dreams. Well, I mean, I think it would probably well, be quite well deserved if it did it was, kibosh. It's been all part of the uh, grifting that's been going on as well, yeah. because my father died right at the beginning of COVID. Mm. So we had a very small funeral and yeah. everything. It wasn't COVID, they said, but it, it, it was sepsis and everything. My stepmother was in one of these homes mm. at this stage and uh, somehow survived. Doesn't really know but anything. I bet you couldn't see her. Nobody was allowed anywhere near her. That's and let's not shocking. forget, this is the other thing, yeah. and this is the bit that I have not liked, is that it's all very well Matt Hancock saying this and then saying that or whatever, mm. not agreeing with anything that he's actually doing. The other thing is, of course, complicit with some of these particular care homes that are private anyway. Yeah. What on earth was our money going to yeah. pay for all of this masking and everything else within these industries yeah. when they were privately getting money from the government and then all doing yeah. their little round about we need so which much is, more. Which is why it's so I'm, important Isabel has shown Exactly that. Messages. I think it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Because the inquiry is taking so long mm. that people's memories, you know, we, it just they're just trying to shove it along the lines well, the thing, so that yeah, everyone calms down. The great down thing, and thing that's just, happened as well yeah. is that it's kick-started a conversation as many of these things often do. Mm. And so at Prime Minister's questions this week, you know, Keir Starmer was actually asking why is the inquiry not being done quicker? Yeah. People are asking yeah. more questions yeah. about what it was that was done at the time. Yeah. And I mean, Leon, you know more about this, the inner workings of these things uh, than most. But I mean, you know, why is it taking so much time? Because in Denmark, they've already had an inquiry and it's done been and finished, dusted. done and dusted. In other countries in Europe, they've had their inquiries done and dusted. You know, we seem to love these kind of 10 year long Chilcot style inquiries that achieve absolutely nothing. It's and just people running one. scared. I think mm. they're just scared yeah. that they might get accused of something that isn't quite right or whatever it might be. And as we see, you know, Matt Hancock's text messages. I think the most disturbing thing is that this is a guy who texts in all caps yeah. his messages <laughs> to George Osborne, you know, texting, <laughs> texting in all caps. That's a red flag. That really is. I mean, You've got to so... worry about a guy that does that, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, the other one that I thought was interesting, I was listening to an interview this week with Lord Bethel, uh, yes. who was one of his ministers at the time in, mm -hmm. the, in the Department of Health as well. And he apparently has mysteriously uh, deleted a lot of his WhatsApp messages, he says, because his phone was getting full up. Mm. And you're going, come on, mate, everybody <laughs> knows that is complete and utter BS. Um, you don't have to delete messages on WhatsApp. You can store them in the cloud. You can put them anywhere you like. And uh, funnily enough, many of them have reference to uh, all of this business with COVID and all of the business at the Department of Health at the time, but he doesn't have them anymore. Yeah. I think what it says to the world is, if you don't want something to be in the public domain, don't put it in a WhatsApp message. No, it's absolutely all, right. It also shows, Leon, as you were saying, and you were saying, Mike, how detached these people are from yeah. the reality of yeah. society. What? Mm. That you're in the government, you're a minister, you're WhatsApping, you're texting, yeah. you're taking the mic, you're doing everything like that, and yeah. then you think no one's going to find out about it. Doesn't that show that these people shouldn't be anywhere near the governing yeah. of this? Well, I tell you right. what it also shows is that this Matt Hancock, health secretary during an unprecedented time, all he cared about was the headlines he yes. was going to get if mm. these text messages are to be believed. You know, all he was caring about was the headlines well, rather it wasn't than actually what was about, going was on. I mean, there was Gina. There was Gina. <laughs> he did there was, care there was about lovely her quite a lot. We know how much he cared about Yeah, Gina, he, he, he fell in love. Yeah. He fell in love. He, he, love. Fell in love. he said, apparently, he was he? distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. We were, all, we were all distracted, yeah, Mike. I mean, look at all that vile picture when he's supposed to be sawing the country's health. Yeah. I wasn't doing anything like that. Absolutely disgraceful behaviour. Anyway, Mark, you're next <laughs> with uh, your first nomination. What is it? My nomination is with schools up and down the land mm. and unisex toilets yeah. that, for me, should not be anything part of our education system at any age. Mm. I'll go back a long way. Firstly, to when I was a youngster, we had sex education in the last year of our primary school. Yeah. Uh, we laughed a bit about it, but we were told. It was then developed when we all moved schools. I was in a mixed school uh, to start with, and then I was yeah. in an all-boys all school. I know exactly what boys do, and I have one daughter. And um, the, the, the most important thing for me is that the predators, not just the kids, the boys who were, oh, they love the girls, of course they do, it's all what we are but the predators will be around yeah. on this. And when stupid boys... And it probably is start... a bit worse now because they've all got phones, because what we should... Well, say I'm just that... about to say about this yeah. now. This is the problem. It's no different in a way, but this time they are recording mm. this. They are going into the next cubicle, the boys, 
I presume 13, 14, 15, a lot of them when they're sort of already five years behind the thinking of women at that stage <laughs> and don't actually even catch never up catch till up. I, well, never catch up, but do so when I get to 25. <laughs> but what happens is they're taking pictures of um, young girls, perhaps even having periods and what have you for the first time, uh, because they're allowed in yeah. here. Now, I don't mind unisex toilets in restaurants or anything, right. as long as the whole things are closed yeah. and there isn't, and this is the most worrying thing for me with all of this, there isn't, when you come out of the cubicle, um, it's a, a sort of fair a sink game there. for everybody yeah. with sinks right. and everything else yeah. there. You've got to have toilets for girls and women, toilets for boys and men, yeah. the trans and everybody else. I've told there's now 75 other genders. That's going to cost a lot in the education it's budget. a lot of toilets That as well. lot should all go <laughs> together. Yeah. Yeah. But should they? The whole problem yeah. here is your daughter... One of the main things when you grow up with daughters is, yeah, you don't want them to take drugs, but you don't want to get pregnant very early on to ruin yeah. their future. Well, don't they don't want well, the, the one thing I, didn't want want to, one thing I wanted to point out, though, was that people have been demonstrating, schoolgirls have been demonstrating well, in Southampton, in yeah. Essex, in Blackpool, all over. all over the place, because they don't want it either. No, and what they've been yeah. doing is they have been sorting this out, and yet they're not being listened to. No. They're not being listened to by teachers who are doing anything but look after what yeah. is very much part of our education and is severely well, lacking. And there, was actually, is yeah. Yeah. there well, was actually a question after question time with Keir today to Rishi about this, saying that, you know, we should... Was that actually, Rosie Duffield's one? Yes, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. About protecting young people. Mm. Yeah. And Rishi said, well, I'm going to trust the educators to make the right decisions. Wrong. Well, they, we've already proven yeah. that they don't make well, the right decisions. Well, all they decisions. care about, as we now know, is getting themselves more money, going out on strike, not telling the school that they work for whether they're going to go on strike, so mm. the schools will never be able to shut and going on Stonewall training courses. Yeah, well, look at what happened in the Isle of Man this week. In the Isle of Man, they've suspended um, sex education yeah. in the school because they had um, a drag queen there oh, well. teaching these kids who were in primary school, by the way, yeah. um, not in the top level of primary school, but down below, about all sorts of sex acts and things that, you know, they could get themselves involved in. And that in. there are 75 genders. Yeah. Well, and you're you kind of what? going, what on earth are the school thinking? As a mother of a, a grown boy and a little girl... Yeah. You know, I, I, as the parent, take responsibility mm. for making sure that they both grow up being accepting of all human beings and knowing what their gender is and what that entails. Yes. And this, you know, this is not because we're saying that all men are rapists, because they're not. Obviously, no. most aren't. But 98% of sexual assaults are on women yeah. by men. So we don't know who mm. they are. Let's keep them apart. Yeah. There is also, a bigger picture. Can I just picture? have a point of order here, Mr Saggers? Because unisex <laughs> toilets, I don't think, are the planks here. I think it's the um, schools, because actually... Yes, it is the schools. You, quite don't, like, you I mean, don't mind I, no, a unisex right. toilet in it's, a restaurant. Yes. So let's toilets, make it the schools. It's okay. the schools and what it's doing, <laughs> it's failing pupils. Yes. Yeah. Because... And you made such a good point just now about this, is that whatever we think... I mean, boys are going to be boys. We're probably not allowed to say that, but they are. Yeah. Because they're... You can say it on Plank of the Week. Of course you can. <laughs> so we're, we're, we can do all of that. But eventually, what we don't want is that they think this is the norm when mm. they get into society mm. and they'll get away with it. Because every single offence is too late for somebody's yeah, daughter. exactly. And it's outrage. Exactly right. Well, I mean, you wonder what's going on in the schools. There was a, a, a report came out, I think, earlier this week or back in the last week, uh, where something like 38% uh, of people under the age of 24 weren't sure who won the Second World War. And you kind of go, sorry, that can't be right. <laughs> but it was, it was right. It, it seems was a whole, yeah. unbelievable. People Absolutely. are being taught... But they know about the genders. Is that what they're they know where the unisex yeah. yeah. toilets are, but they don't know or who won the war. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, right, Amanda, you're next. Hello. Um, so, Jessica Barden. Mm. So, she's... I don't know if you've heard of her. She, um, she was on a Channel 4 uh, comedy show um, called... The end of the effing world. I oh, mean, yeah. it's... you can tell it's Channel Four. There's a swear word in the title. They're so clever, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, they, they're so pathetic. These people. They think, oh, I know. Let's get some people naked, or let's put the f word in the title, and then that'll be good TV. <laughs> well, it isn't. Shut it down. Well, yeah. She, I mean, she exactly. She's the same as Channel Four being silly. <laughs> she is. Um, she's been ranting about posh people. Yes. She um, doesn't like posh people. She doesn't does like she? posh people. She's from Yorkshire. She's brought up, um, and and she says that they shouldn't be playing working class characters. This is from the woman. Who, was she not in also in the Crown or something, or was somebody else in the Crown? So she's taken offence to Emma Corrin, who was in the Crown. She oh. played Princess Diana yes. because Princess. She wanted after prin playing Princess Diana, wanted to go and play a, a different role, and she said a gritty role. She wanted to go and do something different. She doesn't, doesn't want to be typecast. Right. Fair enough. Most actors are like that. Um, and then 
yeah, Jessica has had a go at her and said that no, it shouldn't be. It's working, uh, working class tourism. She doesn't think it's that so we should be able stuff, to. It? Yeah, we should. They should I be able to. Isn't that, that acting? acting was <laughs> yeah. about playing someone who wasn't yeah. you. Right. Isn't that well, there's a the famous story about Laurence Olivier and Dustin Hoffman when they were filming Marathon Man. And Dustin Hoffman had to be this guy who was being sort of tortured by the Nazi dentist in a chair, and he was meant to be kind of lack of sleep and all this. And he spent apparently the weekend on the streets of New York sleeping rough. And he came in supposedly on the Monday to Laurence Olivier to, with his sort of cigar holder and his cigarette holder smoking and having a glass of gin. And uh, he said something like, Dear boy, what have you been doing? And, and he told him he'd been sleeping rough all weekend, and he just went, it's called acting, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> acting. We, and it is, yeah. isn't it? You look at, I look at actors and then you see an interview with them or whatever and you think, blimey, you are nothing like the yeah. character. You must be a fantastic actor. Right. If they're just playing people who they are like, it's Apart not very, from the very skillful. Unless, of course, you're Tom Cruise, who just always plays Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever he's in. <laughs> well, I, I saw... I'm going to say this right now. I saw Tom Cruise this week... Did you? ..in spitting image live... Right. ..at the Birmingham oh, Rep. Yeah which is very much, if you've seen Avenue Q, they've got the puppeteers. Yeah. It's two and a half hours of laugh out loud. Right. You could have written the whole thing. Mm. Just go and see it. It's going around the country. Okay. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But with that in mind, I went to a school in Cambridge where Sir Peter Hall, at 17, mm. did a Hamlet right. that people would say as good as any that's ever been done. But also, at that school, I was a director in the sixth form of uh, one of the biggest uh, plays that the first players did. And um, we insisted in the 70s that no men would play women. We would get the women in from the girls' school. Yeah. And we had to fight with the headmaster yeah. over this, but we thankfully had three really good masters who stood up and could have lost their jobs mm. over mm. that. So that, for me, is what's important. And we brought in not just... Uh, women to play women, we also opened it up to other people from other schools to be very much part of it, to make it all inclusive. Yeah. That's... It's not... Acting and, and everything, it's about being inclusive, yeah. Yeah, of not exclusive of for anything. And no. that's why Jessica is my plank of the week, and you have to make her plank of the week. Well, you can't tell me what I have to do, because <laughs> I'll just have you ejected from the show. Oh, um, but is you there can a try button if you that like. you press um, behind um, <laughs> You've run out of time as well, it's Leon's turn. Leon, who have you got for us? I am nominating for plank of the week our esteemed former Prime Minister, You'll have to narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the Boris Johnson one, the blonde hair guy okay. with the shaggy hair. Right. Um, he... Uh, I think he's torpedoed his chances of, of, of making any sort of comeback, which obviously he's hankering for, because yeah. Rishi Sunak is he Brexit though? deal. Do you think he is? I yeah. think he is. Of course he is. He yeah, he, he wants it, to be back. He? Well, he's making a load of money, yeah, isn't he? but if he, he comes back, he'll be on a porch. Well, if he banks all the money he's making now, though, you know, he this could is be true. Right. And he can write a few more chapters to his book, can't he? He has a second <laughs> stint. So, um, But I think he's, his chances are, are, are slim now, because Rishi Sunak's Brexit deal has been sort of roundly... Uh, accepted, but everyone's waiting with bated breath as to what Boris Johnson's going to say. Now, it's not just him who mm. I've got a problem with. It's all of these former prime ministers, which of which there are plenty now, who keep sticking their oar in. Yeah. John Major on Brexit, Tony Blair on anything he can, anything, anything he can get his uh, get his thoughts on, yeah. and then digital you know, ID. That's a good idea. Digital yeah, thanks, ID. That's Tony. a good idea. Liz Truss on on foreign policy. She's only a backbench MP. What's she got to do going out to talk? She's about actually China? been out of power now longer than she was in power. <laughs> she's all already talking. You know, we all remember when she was there, but I don't remember how long she was there for or what she did. No, well, it was, it was 49 days, I think, in total, yeah. and absolutely... Well, I'll tell you what did happen. The Queen obviously died and she tanked the economy. I mean, that, that's... That's unlucky, it. isn't it? Yeah, that, that is, is unlucky. unlucky. It's an unlucky legacy. But anyway, look, Boris Johnson, former Prime Minister, just stick your, stick your nose out of things. Go and enjoy making your money yeah. uh, with your books and your speeches and all the rest of it. And why do we have to hear... Do you know where I'd like to see him make a return? And that's in, uh, the t in London. Make him come back and be mayor of London again. That would actually be quite that satisfying. Would be He'd be good at that. Yeah. He'd be good he at was that. good at And that. he was very good and, at that. And yeah. Sadiq Khan's so useless at it yes. now. You know, he actually came out yeah. the other day. It was recorded on a camera saying that Brexit was to blame for the fact you couldn't buy any tomatoes in London. First of all, you can buy tomatoes can. in London. Yeah. And second of all, it's got nothing to do with Brexit. No. Apart from that, he was quite right to say it. Yeah. There I mean, must be yeah. some sort of condition that Boris Johnson has where he has to do the same thing more than once. <laughs> he's done it more than how many well, times with his wives <laughs> yeah. and his kids there. He obviously can't just say, oh, I've done that one once, I yeah. don't want to do that again. I've got to get back in there again somehow just to show that I can do it more than once. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe he should get an acting role playing a working-class person because he's quite posh, isn't he? Yeah. He is quite he posh, isn't he? Jessica right. would not like... He's proper posh as well because he's, people... That 
I know yeah. who know him, and I don't feel one of them, Leon, say that, you know, he's got a rank, horrible old car, doesn't believe in having a decent <laughs> he's, car. He, I, 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 he's, I might sound posh, but I don't, yeah. don't drive Holes posh. in his shoes. If he goes to the house, it's all <laughs> messy. Never you know, his nothing's hair. new. Well, no, he messes his hair up deliberately. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the proper posh people don't have anything no. that's new, do they? They no, don't no, have everything no. that's you old. To, your posh um, credentials are, are, are at peak if you drive around yes. in a battered old car. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. I think, I think he'd, have been, he'd have been the clever one in the Hatton Garden heist if he hadn't been working. He would have been, <laughs> wouldn't he? He would have been. But he's a good time, he's a good time Prime Minister. He's good to be fair, they stole less in that than they stole during COVID. But that's another story. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, coming up next, we're going to be talking about a couple of uh, MPs and possibly somebody who did something rather stupid. This is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week, the one show where we do the run around the world and can find them from absolutely anywhere. They could be in Australia, they could be in Venezuela, they could be in Tooting. Uh, well, that's where Satine <laughs> Khan comes from, in case everybody doesn't know. Uh, that's what we keep saying anyway. Uh, but it's my turn now to give you my Plank of the Week, uh, and it's another former politician, actually, and this time it's from the Labour Party. It's a lady by the name of Jackie Smith. You might all remember, famously, um, had some rather interesting claims on her... Um, uh, on her expenses. That's a pretty old picture of her, to be fair. That's not being That's very kind very to her. That's very old. Because uh, we're going like uh, to see what she looks like now in a minute. But you might remember that uh, amongst the many things that uh, she claimed for uh, in her parliamentary expenses were, uh, some, I think, some barbecue uh, equipment, uh, some garden <laughs> furniture, uh, but more importantly, uh, some porn films that her husband had been watching oh, while she yes. wasn't uh, at home. And uh, she actually put them in and claimed for them. It was absolutely extraordinary, staggering. <laughs> All vital um, to being a successful yeah. MP, right? But the good news <laughs> is that now that she's out of politics and she sort of works as a pundit, she does podcasts, She's also got a sort of foundation, because they all want a foundation, don't they? Um, and this is the uh, Joe Cox Foundation that she's got, and she's the chairman of that. She was on Politics Live this week because she wanted to talk about how she was launching a civility commission because she thinks there's too many rude people in politics, right? And I think she's probably right. You know, it'd be nice mm -hmm. if people could be more pleasant to yeah. one another. So let's have a look at what she said to Isabel Oakeshott, who's big this week on Plank of the Week, <laughs> uh, right here on Politics Today. That clearly wasn't so the case. You'd make it more oh, difficult. Isabel, shut up. I, that, excuse me. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's not, not let's not descend. Your, let's not descend into insult. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Civility and politics. Yeah. Is that well, we'll come on to that. I mean, come on to that. Your example of politeness and politics. And I'm in a it's low and yeah. And the re. Oh, come on, Isabel. <laughs> it's about, you could not make this stuff up. <laughs> I saw that and I thought, that can't be right. That must be a, that must be a spoof, right? Yeah. She can't actually be launching the Civility Commission. And in fact, <laughs> she was launching the Civility Commission and she just went, oh, shut up, Isabel. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I think, I think Isabel Oakes has had the week uh, from heaven, not from hell. Yeah, you know, yeah, she's, yeah. She's, she's all over the, the, the political agenda. <laughs> but this I found to be absolutely and utterly hypocritical and typical, really of the way that, uh, that politics operates, I'm you know. i actually lost for words on that, yeah. actually. It's I mean, you would think, I mean, even if you were getting incredibly wound up, and I don't see why you would be, because Isabel Oakeshott, whatever she is, is not she's somebody who, who... She's very calm. She talks in a very, you know, sort of measured manner. Mm. She doesn't shout at people. She doesn't talk over people. But Jackie Smith was talking rubbish. But, I mean, you would think in somewhere in the deepest, darkest recesses of your brain, mm -hmm. if you're trying to promote civility, you would go, whatever you do, don't say shut up. <laughs> Don't say whoever is someone on else on, with on the you. panel. I mean, right. it's just crazy. She's a politician, so she should know this stuff. Yeah. She should. Oh, she's been out of the business for a little bit, but she should know not to be exposed in the way that that was. The, hip the hypocrisy of it all is just madness. Yeah. Yeah. But it also shows you, doesn't it, quite how um, deranged people have become over the whole Brexit. Uh, it really does. Problem. And you know what? Over the last few years, we've all been involved in some pretty heated conversations with some really strong views at the point. Mm. But I can't ever imagine in a scenario where I'm being filled telling someone to sh just shut up. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I can see why she's trying to do it. Oh. Because she's Shut watched. up, shut up, Sagan. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> exactly. Now, I can understand that she's seen people like the great Piers Morgan and others misbehaving uh, on television where before you basically couldn't mm. do anything but behave. Yeah. And I think she thought, 
I'm going to get down with this a little bit. No. And I'm going to... Yeah, Surely I not. She did, what, I she's she's promoting the civility, though. Yeah, I know, because I mean, you can, she was going to be... I mean, I can oh, buy shut that. Up, shut no, up, shut up. No, I can buy that. <laughs> no, I can buy that she if it wasn't... That, if she oh, wasn't just... promoting something actually called yeah. the Civility Commission. I mean, that's just bonkers. <laughs> you know, because don't forget, it's the Joe Cox Foundation. They're trying to basically say, look... The problem yeah. that we have in this country is that people shout at each other, people have really, really ill feelings towards each other, and then people get hurt. So, I mean, she can't have wanted to do it. You know we? what's going to happen now, don't you? The police are going to get involved for a hate crime, hate and they'll crime. announce that she's in menopause, and then it'll go away. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> or would it be perimenopause, which I didn't even know was a thing until a couple of weeks ago? Do you think forgot where she was then? I think she might have done. She just Because I think she that's how she talks to, right. to the old yeah. man. You know, after the Paul She's, episode, well, after, you know, after he's, stag, got, no, after he's got he nowhere to go. Stag, staggers down from the barbecue um, with yeah. uh, half a sausage right. and, and, and dressed up as uh, a devil. If you'd watching um, those films, really yeah. before, exactly. <laughs> I mean, no wonder. Oh, shut up, darling. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> are they still married? I think they are. Because one of the other things they did was they did that house flipping thing, where you know, at one point she claimed the house in the Midlands oh. was the second home. Um, <laughs> So that you get the mortgage payment, and then then the London home became the second home. I mean, it was disgraceful. It's just the houses of sleaze, did. isn't it? It really oh. is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, uh, it's your turn already again oh, for your second nomination. Do tell us. Okay, so slightly more frivolous than my feelings for Matt. I just the Cambridge Students Union had a vote this week or last week where they decided that all of their cafes across the student unions, where most students eat because it's nice and cheap, yeah. are going to be vegan. Oh. And do you know what? I'm just sick and tired of these people telling us what we mm. must do. Yes. You know what? You might not eat what I eat, but right. I don't care. Right. And I'm not going to try and force no. you to eat what I eat. That sounds you a know, bit like it's, common sense it's, to me. Yeah. <laughs> being an adult <laughs> you know, can't and, have being, that. and being responsible. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired of vegans or whoever it is just pushing their beliefs mm. because they feel they're so intellectual and so righteous that they know better than us. Yes. And we must just follow Also, they're thoughts. working on a premise which is actually wrong. They're yes, saying that, they you know, if you eat, you know, highly processed non-meat mm -hmm. products, mm. you will be healthier and the world will be a better place. Well, it won't be, and you won't no. be better off either. Okay. You know, it's a complete and utter... And I can like... tell you, as a doctor, the number of vegans I see who are short in vitamin D yeah. and vitamin yeah. D and folate is vast. Yeah. Because and you what do you tell them get... to do? Have I some tell... steak? Well, I just give them the results and say, it's your diet, you decide what to yeah, eat. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> genuinely, I wouldn't know if I was low in, in, in deficiency uh, what you were supposed to do about it if you're a vegan, because you can't get the protein out of a meat product. It's hard. It's yeah. really, really hard. Mm. You know, but it's ridiculous. You see a lot of lentils. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. It, and I don't care what they eat. I really don't it's care. It's the principle, isn't it? It yeah. is. It's just mm -hmm. stop telling us what Being to eat. This, is, on. this has got personal for me, because I'm a townie, not a gownie, born up in Cambridge. My great-grandfather in the late uh, 1880s and my grandfather delivered the milk, bred guinea pigs for work in investigation within the university, and all of the chickens ate at High Table and everywhere else throughout the university. Mm. So they would have become... My great-grandfather would have become a pauper. Yeah. He'd been shut in the workhouse. I would not even be here yeah. now. Oh, no. That's if, right. Like, so you think three or four generations down, the vegans will ruin it for everybody. Yeah. Yet again, oh, it's well, absolute I also, rubbish. I always wonder what would happen to the animal population, and they never can mm. answer this, because, I mean, if you don't eat the cows and the pigs, and, yeah. you know... The other yeah. chickens. I mean, what happens? They just run amok. Because well, there's a lot of them. Also, you also you know, would do they just know. be sort of stampeding down the street? You, you, you <laughs> know, we should have bloody eaten them. You know? We all had jobs. Yeah, we all right. had jobs in the colleges, of course, when yeah. we were growing I mean, up. Actually, you've the, the raised table. a good question, actually, because I wonder if they still have the guinea pigs for the experiments, but you're not allowed to eat any meat. Uh, so it's OK to and, kill some, and some rodents. The other, the other thing is, what you're going to tell me when all of the the old college greats come back and sit at high table oh. that they're going to have to have a um, a plant-based mushroom casserole i really doubt it i Very once tasted a vegan it. sausage it was the worst thing i'd ever eaten this is know, the worst that, no i was going to say today i actually ordered a sausage roll and they the, the woman said a, a vegan sausage so, a vegan sausage roll no well, I mean, proper, that, why would that be roll. the first why would yeah. that be the first but they, thing? they shouldn't no. be allowed to even call them sausages because they're not they're sausages not. are yeah. they they're, and they're also they're really sticks. they'll be really bad for you because they're really highly <laughs> but processed don't get it. food vegetables are delicious yes if yeah. you want a sausage or you want a burger have a sausage or a burger in its yeah. intended Listen, form yeah, i mean I, the... I eat plenty of vegetarian food when you sometimes you go to an indian restaurant you Ooh. have a vegetarian mm. uh, main course if mm. you mm. wish it's perfectly good mm. uh, you can eat um, plenty of but you no know things like ratatouille which are really good but you know this whole kind of about yeah. you can't eat meat with it.
It's just ridiculous. It yeah. is. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Right, uh, Mr Sagans, you're next. Well, I have to say that the man Chris Cook is a Newcastle United fan. And he's a big fan. The whole family are real fans. And for the first time in a long time, they had the opportunity to come down to Wembley last Sunday to play in the final of the League Cup against Manchester United. It was, it was a big deal, wasn't it? They it was all came to Trafalgar deal, Square. And they and are that. fantastic. Yeah. They're great fun. supporting. And the Toon <laughs> Army came down. As you can see now, this <clears throat> was the tattoo that Chris had done three days before the final took place. And actually what it says up there, it's, uh, it's got uh, Mami, Mami, Mami is all part of this. And what that is, that is the song that they first sung when they got into Europe. It's, I'll try to do it in the, okay. the Geordie accent. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> we, no, no, no. Mami, Mami, Mami. Um, we're off to Wembley. Mami, Mami, Mami. We all want be on for tea. And that's what it is. That's, that's, that's that their thing. Good. And they, it wasn't very good. Are there no. many South African Newcastle fans? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, but anyway, that's what, they, that's what they say. That's what they sing. Anyway, right. Mum and Grandma, after, of course, they yes. lost, didn't know that he'd actually had this done yeah. and went berserk. Right. Well, how old is he? 31. Wait for this. <laughs> He's gone mad. It's very family-oriented in Newcastle. Uh, back at them. Said, well, no, I, didn't, I know I shouldn't have done this and everything. And I, Grandma's disowned him. And then... We should point out, by the way, they didn't win, right? They didn't win. Oh, shit, well, yeah, yeah, they, they didn't win. They didn't win. Right. But they didn't win. But more importantly than that, <laughs> sheepishly Dad is sitting in the corner of the house back in wherever, up in the northeast, and then has to admit that he did exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> what, for this, t for this yeah. match? Yeah. Oh, my God. Can I say that I actually think Grandma should be the plank? I mean, leave him alone. He's 31. Yeah, but he does not have an indelibly uh, tattooed it's image his body, on himself, which is completely wrong. <laughs> but he's got wrong. the publicity that he wanted, probably. But he's now, might, if it's anything like the last it's time homeless. they were at Wembley, he will be 104. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> it was, not, was it not 40 years or something? Oh. Well, anything. Anyway, he was my. That was just a. Yeah, one I of think those that things. is pretty planky. Because Mike, you're you're much younger than we are, but Mike and I remember people who had tattoos when we were growing up. Try to get rid of them because yeah. they were not what you wanted. No, now if you want to be now. a proper rebel, just don't have any yeah. because everybody's got <laughs> yeah. tattoos. Everybody Did, got tattoos here. Yeah, well, you've got a tattoo. This that's is what wrong. we always ask. Have you got any? No. Mm -hmm. This have is you? very you unusual. I haven't actually. No. Ah. No, I don't. I don't have like you? pain much. No. I'm told it's quite <laughs> painful. Yeah. Have you got any tattoos? Colin always tells me that his grandma told him not to trust a woman whose tattoos were misspelled. Misspelled. Yeah, I think that's probably right. <laughs> I, I, I remember, you know the, remember the woman who got some kind of Chinese thing t uh, tattooed on her. She thought it was some kind You'd of Chinese be difficult to find. Um, saying, and it turned out to, to, yeah. to mean something from the local Chinese. <laughs> you restaurant. would be difficult to find five <laughs> people. Market, this is very of different unusual. Generations. Very unusual. None of us have got a tattoo. Yeah. Hmm? Do you think yeah. Boris somebody's lying? I'm not lying. Has Boris Johnson got a tattoo? I was going to say, do you think <laughs> Boris has got a tattoo <laughs> celebrating his second stint as Prime Minister? No, <laughs> I tell you what, all of his preempt... children. No, yeah. uh, no I think, I think, I think, I think what he's actually got, he made the mistake, and it's why he's, he's quite big, is that he's had all of the girlfriends and wives tattooed <laughs> on the stomach. <laughs> oh. That seems like a pretty good point to take a little short break. Because we're halfway through. Uh, we've got more to do, though. Uh, coming up, uh, we're going to be talking about two people that I've never heard of. But uh, never mind, I'm sure they are very, very much uh, deserving of a plank. Uh, and I've got something familiar for you as well. This is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're getting towards the end of it, but don't worry, we've still got three more nominations for you, and we're going to go to Amanda Devlin, the next one. Amanda, who have you got for us? Uh, so is this, I'm sure she's a really lovely woman. She's called Don, uh, Dawn Sager. OK. She's from Shropshire. Right. And she bought a packet of Walker's she crisps. There she is. Um, she's, she's not the plank. Her behaviour was plankish. Yeah. Basically, she ate that heart-shaped crisp mm. from a Walker's packet. Oh, they all shaped a bit like that. She took a picture. She took a picture like, no, this is a real heart. It looks like a love oh. heart. And it was near Valentine's Day. And she looks at it and she thinks, oh, that's really sweet. And she takes a picture. Um, she then realises when her friends tell her that if she'd kept that and she'd not eaten it, yeah. she'd have got maybe got £100,000. <laughs> it was part of a competition oh dear. for walkers where if you find these, you take a picture, you keep it in the packet and then they'll judge them. It goes to a, a judging team to see which, which is the best heart. Um, but she just 
poor Trump Trumped uh, into it. Maybe Gary Lineker could uh, no, offer would... up the £100,000 out of his vast... Um... I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. all I, I was going to his... say is that that is why there has been no prize, because all the money has gone to him in the first place. Well, exactly right. The, the competition is still open, so you could... If Does you, you need to, you need to keep, count? You need to keep, no, they said no. They I said they would be bombarded she with... she posted it on social media, did she? Yeah, so she's put it out there and, um, and everyone was saying... That was a bit silly. Yeah. That's a bit mean of that walkers, a isn't it? I think. I, think, I think they should give her yeah. a chance. I mean, I suppose if it's a draw... Give her a tenner. Can they not just put know? her in the draw anyway? I mean, what difference would that make? It's not going to cost them any money. If they're going to give the money having, away. I, do, I don't want to find <laughs> in my roast chicken upset. crisps. <laughs> what? Uh, a heart. I don't want to find in my roast <laughs> no. chicken. No. I, I eat crisps when I'm getting angry. Yeah. So the last <laughs> thing I want to do is to be looking for a heart for 100 yeah. grand. The knowing that Gary Lee. But it's such an easy way to get 100 grand. Also, who knows this is the shape of a crisp? I mean, I'm oh, usually, if I'm yeah, just going like that, aren't you? I mean, you're not actually not going, oh, look, the crisps are all different shapes. But now they know they weren't fake. What, you mean she could have sculpted it? No, I mean, somebody... somebody yeah, Actually, somebody there's else an idea. I think it's, it's quite hard to else. sculpt a crisp, isn't it? I think this well, is no, why take there's a got to crisp. be all these terms and conditions where you've got to send it off, because, yeah, yeah. what if you've actually just mm. made, made it, it yourself? <laughs> you, you know what I think is quite clever? Some restaurants are doing this thing where if you find a stone in your olive, you win a tenner. That's and I think that that's surprising. genius, because you've just bitten down on a stone and an olive, broken your tooth, <laughs> yeah. screaming and, and moaning, and then there you right. go, you win, you win some you money. You need a bit more than that to <laughs> fix your teeth. That's I point. hate olives. I'm never going to win that town. Yeah. I mean, but all, imagine, uh, imagine... Haven't all olives got stones in them? Well, you can get pipless ones, can't you? Seedless ones. Stones. But yeah, stone but stone you can ones. see whether it's there or not, can't you, by whether they've cut it in half. Yeah, but sometimes they... they sometimes you know, they're, if it's got a big road. hole in the middle yeah. of the olive, you can go, I'm pretty sure that doesn't have a stone in it. But I'm with you, really. I feel for her. They should at least give her... Put her in the draw. Quid. Well, they should put her in, in the draw. Chris or Chris tenors. for life. Just give her Yeah, Chris very good. Yeah. That's <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Um, imagine or, losing at the... Or you could just give her, like, a year's supply of yeah. crisps. Yeah, you? that would be a good idea. So, I mean, or, but or Gary Lineker for People used days. to do that. Do you remember, I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but I remember a story once of somebody who opened up their box of Kentucky Fried Chicken and it had a chicken's head. Um, which had been somehow, you know, cooked and battered <laughs> and was sitting in the box of family fun <laughs> and they were horrified. And that was a good story. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. and there was a mouse, I think, in uh, yeah. somebody's soup oh, once. Oh, yes, it's always... But anyway... I think um, we should start a petition to get to her, get her yeah. I think so. Otherwise, get she's going to... Sager something. This is going to give her a chip on her <laughs> shoulder. Uh, the one get bit it? I don't yeah. understand no, no, about this, it. how on <laughs> earth chip. do they get the crisp, heart-shaped crisps into the packet? Is that really going on? Well, they don't smash any of the other crisps, do they? There's an Oompa Loompa running around yeah. the factory, dropping right. one in every now and again. Gender, um, gender neutral <laughs> Oompa Loompa, of course, as yeah. we know. Well, not um, anymore. Uh, no, they've gone back the other way. Leon, what have you got for us? So my uh, final plank is the uh, the London Underground workers, yeah. who, along with the London Underground tube drivers, have decided to strike, as everyone is, but on <laughs> budget day. Now, they're almost as if they're pretending now that this is uh, anything but to do with party politics. Yeah, yeah. So the Chancellor's going to stand up, deliver a speech where we hope that the economy's back on track, but the unions are hoping that we, we, we forget that and yeah. think actually the country's being crippled by their striking. <clears throat> now, what makes this worse, London Underground drivers get paid an average of 65-odd thousand pounds mm. a year for eff effectively sitting there pressing a few buttons. And not only that, they got a pay rise last April, 8.5% or something along those lines. So yeah. the reasons for striking are limited. Yeah. And I just think it's posturing. I think it's jumping on the bandwagon right. with everyone else striking. And I think limited is being really kind. I think there are no reasons for them to strike on that kind of money. And also, how difficult can that training course be? Forwards, back... Also, yeah. working start. for TfL, I happen to know this because I've been speaking to people about it quite a lot ever since all these strikes have been going, because the teachers have been on strike this week, the rail workers are on strike again at the weekend. It's quicker to say um, who isn't on strike. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we used to do strike of the day, but we got we got so bored doing it that we had to stop doing it. Because I'm like, there's one every day now, at least one. Oh, well, sometimes episode, two, yeah. Um, you know, there was some regional strike, you know, it's the trains between, you know, yeah. Sheffield and Leeds weren't running or something. Anyway, um, they get ridiculously good perks in TfL, including, apparently, if you are a train driver and say you have an eight-hour shift, they count the shift from when you walk out your front door. So when you leave your house, that's really? when the shift starts. So if it takes you, say, 45 minutes to get to work, you're already nearly an hour in. Yeah. So you've only got to do another six hours and then you start the journey home. Yeah. And yeah. then you take a break in the middle because your union says you can. Yeah. And then maybe one for a tea break it's, it's, it's somewhere. It's like the... in this business, the old uh, electricians and yeah. everybody that, you know, once you go a minute over your shift, yeah. you actually get a double shift. Yes. And, and what <laughs> That's unbelievable. It, being in the job that you used to be in, though, wouldn't it be great for Jeremy Hunt to mock up a tube train 
on budget day that he drives and the cabinet get out of the, the doors <laughs> and say... We're Why are you not this? working in government? That's, that's, a good idea. Idea. <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. That's a much better idea than the stunting up that Windsor rubbish, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, much mean, better, you know. much better. But, you know, <laughs> I, I do think that it's so politically motivated. Yeah. And the other yeah. thing is they're saying yeah. their pensions are being impacted. Yeah, well, they reason, are, because the their reason, pensions are so good. Well, yeah, they, exactly. They have, nobody's got the money to pay them anymore. And the other reason for it is because the person who's running TfL and their finances are in dire straits, right. and, of course, one of the mm, favourites of this programme... Who is it who mm. is in charge of TFL? Oh, yeah, Sadiq yeah. Khan. Sadiq Khan. <laughs> so there's is. a reason. Managed, I think this is the first week this year that he hasn't been nominated, <laughs> So he's got a few mentions. But, yeah, because apparently... I think they've got something ridiculous, like a couple of hundred people working at... TFL. Mm. We've got that massive building in Southern, mm. um, which is literally about 15 yeah. floors of... I don't, know, I don't know what they're doing there, but I mean, cab drivers always used to moan that that was where they had to go to renew their licences and stuff. And it's terribly badly run. But there's a couple of hundred people on six-figure salaries yeah. alone yeah. working there. Well, Nobody knows what they do. Finances in, in TFL are, are, are awful, and mm. I just think that it's down to mismanagement by the London Mayor Sadiq Khan, and that's why, mm. not the you know the, yeah. the issues that they're trying to take out on, on ordinary punters trying to go about their day, exactly. trying to get to work, not least the Chancellor, who's going to have an important day that day. So, uh, yeah, I just think it's Hopefully I think it's wrong. people see through it, though, and have a bit of common sense. Well, I think people though. now have got literally no sympathy for any of the strikers, and I include yeah. the NHS strikers in that as well. I think people don't even notice now. No, we're just getting you just on with assume life. that there's going to be a strike. I mean, I point. don't expect posts now, so when Royal Mail told me <laughs> they're on strike, I just go, oh, well, I didn't do you know, even know you were still going. When, <laughs> the, when they last went on strike, um, I worked out that I hadn't had any posts for two weeks exactly. anyway. And I didn't even know they went on strike because I don't get any anyway. <laughs> I didn't notice. You know, all I get is sort of nuisance things from people mm -hmm. that, you know, trying to sell you stuff. I don't actually, nobody actually sends you anything. My bills are all online now. My bank statements mm, are all yeah. online. You know, what do you need them for? But you're, so you're right, though, strike. when there's so many strikes, it loses its kind of importance. It strikes really fatigue, it's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're bored of it now. Yeah, and also the pensions part of it is absolutely right because the pension schemes offer something like 20,000 extra a week a, a year on top of the salary mm. that they get. Mm. And they can retire earlier. Mm. And the whole idea of public sector working in the past was that you had a good pension, you had a good benefits package, mm. but you got less salary yeah. to make up for it. But now they get all of it. They get all of it, yeah, exactly. So and what, I think what, council tax is going up by 5%, yeah. I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They'll probably get a break on that as well. Yeah. You know, so they don't have to actually pay as much as everybody else. Yeah, I just think it's wrong. I think it's wrong, and I think that they're trying to make a political point when actually it's Sadiq Khan, a Labour mayor, who's the root of their problem. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, Budget Day, I mean, I'm not looking forward to it. Maybe it's all those hordes of people who travel on the tube up to Westminster to stand outside on Budget Day. Oh, no, they don't. No. They don't do that, do they? No, okay. it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, coming up, uh, we're going to get to the end of the show, believe it or not, but I've got one more nominee left, and it's somebody who will be very familiar to you, um, and he was probably, I would say, one of the most popular planks of last year, uh, but he's made a return. Uh, he's back this time on his own, but maybe he's going to be having his wife as well. Uh, this is Plank of the Week. More coming up after this. Welcome back to Plague of the Week. We're almost at the end, but there is just one nomination left. And um, I don't quite know how to put this, because I've only got one name here, um, but it should really be two, and I may, may have to make it two. And I'll give you a clue. We want privacy! <laughs> we want privacy! Because that has got to be some of the greatest uh, animated comedy that I think I've ever seen. South Park uh, doing over Harry and so Meghan. Good. Absolutely hilarious. And there they are. We want mm. privacy. Uh, they've been on a privacy tour this week. Uh, they were out in a celebrity haunt, apparently, in How Los Angeles. How did they go on a privacy tour? Well, this is the it's joke. It's oxymoron. Well, exactly, of course it is. But this is the other thing, right? They made their first appearance in public uh, just the other night in California, in Los Angeles. And everybody knows, when I used to work in sort of newspapers and stuff, and Saggers will know this as well, that, you know, everybody knows where the celebrities go. And if you're a celebrity, if you don't want to be photographed, you don't go there, right? But they went to a place which is a haunt of celebrities, which is absolutely riddled with the paparazzi outside, so they could get pictured going in, coming out. People have said in a news report I read that they actually had their own photographer with them as well, because that's the new of thing. Of course they do, and they'll you edit have people it travelling with lights and cameras and all sorts, you know. Yeah. But they're not in it for that reason. Um, I've got Prince Harry up there, but it really should be Harry and Meghan, really, because... Um, Prince Harry started out as the Plank nomination, partly because I saw that he's doing a webinar um, very shortly. <sighs> oh. 
Um, and for those people who don't know what a webinar is, it's where somebody who's very, very clever, who thinks they are, uh, appears on your television screen or computer uh, telling you stuff that you didn't need to know. Uh -huh. uh, and in this case, you can also ask him a question, apparently. Mm -hmm. He's been very generous. Um, for £19, you can ask Prince Harry a question. Now, I've got a couple of questions I'd quite like <laughs> to ask him. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to give him the 19 quid, but apparently you also get a copy of the free book, oh, Spare. Uh, or geez. as it was renamed by South Park, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I just think uh, it's an incredibly low mark for him, yes. even for him, yeah. you know, to be sort of going and down into the dirt. It's a bit like that cameo thing mm, that people yeah. do where you can mm. wish people a happy birthday. Yeah. I mean, He'll do that, do that next. Don't next? give him an idea. Because you can get 30 odd quid we'll for that. those. I mean, You'll... somebody asked me if I wanted to do those. Yeah. I was like, no, it's too horrible. It's <laughs> too dreadful. Oh, you would Not be doing that. No, but I don't <laughs> want to do it. You know, you know the other reason it's really <laughs> low of him? Because I reckon that this was probably planned for much earlier when the pound was parity with the <laughs> dollar. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yes. So he's going to, going to do it now because yeah. he's going to get well, a lot more bucks. There is, another, bucks. there is another reason that I've been told he's doing it now, and it's because the book sales have dried up, basically. So mm. this is a kind of a canny way of selling more All books. Sale because now, so. it's basically you're basically yeah. buying the book. He's got another one, to ask He's got another two or three. And there's well, can you imagine how awful they're going to yeah. be? I mean, how, what's, he, what's he held back? I don't think he's held much yeah, back. We know about his frozen codger. We know about the woman he first slept with. We know about his brother being circumcised. Yeah, I mean, there's not much left to give, is there? No, no. he said that he's got more to tell about Ugh. Wills. And I don't think anybody wants it. But no. the, 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 the crowning moment for me, if you'll pardon the pun, <laughs> uh, is, of course, that she now joins him because they've both been kicked out of Frogmore Cottage by King Charles, who, just, who took against them when they wrote all those horrible things about the royal family. And I just think it's brilliant because Charles him. waited. He didn't mm. do anything, stayed quiet. You know, meanwhile, just said to Prince Andrew, by the way, you can have Frogmore Cottage. Oh, even worse, and imagine, he's given it to Andrew. Yeah, he's given it to Andrew, <laughs> who's now more popular than they are in America. Unbelievable. You but know. remember, they weren't happy there. You no, know. they didn't like it. Was it was so like small. It. It's tiny. It's only got six yeah. bedrooms, which for them Apparently is not enough. Ten. Oh, ten? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a mansion to me. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd just put them... I'd, I'd say you can come on back for the coronation, you can go in one of those empty Amazon warehouses yeah. and just fill it with all your spare books. Yeah, Airbnb, I'd give them. You wouldn't want them anywhere near it. So it's time for me to pick the winner. And there's been some great nominations, uh, it has to be said. Um, but I think it's going to have to be Dr Renee's first choice. We started <laughs> with Matt Hancock, and I think we're going to finish with Matt Hancock, I because think, I think yeah. he's going to be in the news all <laughs> week. He's yeah. probably going to be in the news yeah. all next week. Yeah. You know, let's have a look at what we've got for you, Matt. I think he might have won it before, actually. But here we are, Plank of the Week. Um, I don't think it's ever been more fitting, really, for a man who not only wrote a book with Isabel Oakeshott, but then gave her all of his um, secret WhatsApp messages, yep. which she then gave to the Daily Telegraph. Not so secret anymore. Matt Blancock, I think. <laughs> I mean, congratulations to Isabel Oakeshott, by the way, for putting yeah, it there, because so I think that was amazing. tremendous. Well, thank you very much to Mark Saggers, to Dr Renee Hundekamp, and to Leon, and, of course, to Amanda as well. Um, we'll be back next week at 7 o'clock. But coming up next, it is Friday night with Nadine Doris. Enjoy it.